Okay, welcome to the chapter in medical physics. Today we're going to be looking at positron emission tomography, which is a new way to study the insides of your body. So for example, you see this picture? These are screenshots of your brain. But they are looking in a very different thing. They're looking at how active is your brain at certain regions. What is happening inside there? That's where we get these colorful patterns. And we'll look more at how you get this picture and how you can see what your brain is doing. So yeah. here we have this, um, our notes that we're going to go through. In order to get the picture that we saw just now, you need to yeah. know the scientific processes and the details of what we use in this scanning process. So the first thing you need to know is a radioactive tracer. Right? So this radioactive tracer is some kind of substance that consists of radioactive material. Okay, and this radioactive material is going to be attached to a natural chemical that your body can deal with. Okay, we'll see why in a little bit why it must be radioactive. Huh? So, for, so this uh, radioactive substance will be introduced into the body and absorbed by living tissues inside your body. And these are the tissues that are being studied and used to take the picture later. So when you have this radio tracer in your body, uh, then this will be used to locate and follow the progress of any illness that you cannot see and also to guide the treatment in all the living tissues. So, Miss Lee, what, what is a radio tracer that we use in PET scan? So the time we use fluorodeoxyglucose, this FDG thing. So... Can see a stru molecular structure of glucose here. This is glucose. Our good old glucose. Those of you who do bio, you will know what this is. And something strange is happening, like Miss Ellie. What happened to the glucose? Uh? So glucose. You compare glucose with this FDG on the right. Um, I think they are going to replace something, tweak a small thing in the glucose, so that this FDG is almost like glucose, but not. So you see that little F right there. It has been replaced with some fluorine thing. Fluorine 18. Mm. Infiltrate like a spy. But the body still kind of look at it and like, eh, looks like glucose. Sure, bring mm. it on. Eat the it. body still thinks it's glucose and absorb it. Yep. Okay, so um, one of the reasons why we use this fancy fluorodeoxyglucose is because this decays into a stable product. Mm -hmm. So remember, we learned in the nuclear chapter earlier, uh, you can have some elements or things that can decay and release some kind of radiation, right? Ah, this is where it's useful later. When it releases some kind of radioactive emission, that's where you can detect it. So this, uh, we choose this one, it's also good because it has a pretty sh or rather short half-life. Kind of like two hours, roughly, 180 minutes. So within a day, it will decay and it's stable. No more radioactivity in your body, which is very good. Because if your brain has radioactive for like weeks or months, maybe you want to scan your brain to, you know, study the problem, but you end up creating a problem in your brain because of this radioactive substance. So no, no, we want a pretty short half-life to inject into your body. So, since this fluorine 18, you see the red color fluorine there, okay, since that fluorine is now replaced or incorporated into the glucose, ah, it is now taken up preferentially by rapid growing cancer cells or, or you can say active parts of the brain. And the reason why these cells or these tissues really like glucose is because they are rapidly growing puberty and they need extra energy. So eat the glucose. Oh, so they will eat more glucose than the surrounding living tissue. Your brain is also something that uses up a lot of sugar. You know, whenever you study, you, you watch a lot of videos, there's a need, well, hungry middle of the night, go find dinner. It's your brain. Your brain needs the sugar. So mm -hmm. that's why when... 
when we have glucose and we have something that looks like glucose, smells like glucose, but not really glucose because it's being replaced with this 18 fluorine, it acts as a tracer. We're going to follow the progression of this 18 fluorine and it's being absorbed into this living tissue and then we can track. Tracer is used for tracking, to track the progress of the living tissues and also the illness and the treatment if we're doing any. Yep. So that's the first part. Get mm -hmm. the brain or areas of the brain to absorb this radioactive tracer. Then you come to the second part. Okay, how do you how does this radioactive tracer create some kind of signal that you can measure from the outside of your body? That's why you need to learn this physics number two. This process called annihilation. So annihilation annihilation, if you remember, I don't know if we talk about this in AS or not, but it happens, it can happen when a particle meets an antiparticle. They just destroy each other and just disappear. Release some radiation, of course. Hmm. Okay, so uh, if you see the diagram there, you kind of have an E plus and E minus. In AS, we call them the beta plus, beta minus. If you see, sound familiar? Electron and positron. One is matter, one is antimatter. So E plus, we call it, it's also known as beta plus. E minus, also known as beta minus aka electron and for beta plus it's also known as positron matter antimatter oh, so i'm going to revise as a bit ready oh so long oh, particle physics been a while right mm. okay so you see they come into uh, a certain point where they meet and then they release this wiggly line that's uh, gamma radiation in this case that's the process of annihilation annihilation so these two particles disappear but they release a mm -hmm. gamma that can mm -hmm. travel very far okay so let's go to the let's go to the process how this mm. explosion can help us detect so Tracer releases this, okay? So F18 in the FDG, it will decay and produce a prositron. And your body, I mean, plenty of electrons everywhere. Lah. So this positron, it will annihilate on contact with an electron in the tissue itself. When they annihilate, they produce two gamma photons. Okay, so since, of course, since the combined momentum of this positron and electron is zero because, you know, they disappear. So these two gamma photons, which are produced, okay, they should also have momentum, but you want to have some momentum conservation. So these two gamma that are produced must be traveling in the opposite direction, like exactly the opposite direction. To conserve momentum. To conserve momentum. Mm. Okay. So where did the mass go? Well, disappear, become energy. These two oh, particles shit. just heat, disappear. So oh, that's shit. the last part. So in this annihilation event, you annihilate each other. The mass of the positron and electrons are both converted to energy of the gamma photons. Is there a, a way to calculate this energy? Mm, yes. There's a nice throwback to our, I think, quantum physics? No, nuclear physics chapter yeah. where you have the interchange of mass and energy, remember? Mass can become energy. Where the mass go? Nah, the energy law. So E equals to mc squared. Do you remember? Uh, when we calculate mass defect and binding energy, you can apply that here as well find the combined mass of your your two positron electron beta plus beta minus that amount is converted to gamma hmm. i think we can write an equation to a chemical equation to represent the reaction that's happening so a few things are happening at the same time you have the positron you know this one is 
as a DK product, this thing is the DK product of our SPY F18. And it combines with the beta. We get two gamma. Very strange, uh, the chemical chemical reaction, like not balanced. Okay. So annihilation sort of like is something that really breaks chemistry. But we shall not tell that to the chemistry people. Okay, jokes, jokes. Anyway, this is the initial momentum, which should be equal to the final momentum, which, as mentioned just now, should be zero. So this one, because of this, then this means 2 gamma is opposite direction. Or if you look at the picture, it is 180 degree. Nah, 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 this one. Yep, one go up, one go down in exactly the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Bit like and, an explosion. Yeah, uh, and you know, E will be equal to change in mass C squared. But also, energy of photon, throw back to quantum. How do we find energy of photon, Ami Ah, E equals Which, to HF. HF, okay. Or HC over lambda. Mm -hmm. So probably there's some kind of calculation that they can tie all of this in neatly into a question, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that's the main two main um what you call that physics concepts behind how you get this scan. Okay, number one, mm -hmm. you inject something in your body that releases a signal. Now we call now we know what signal that is. Uh thanks to our fluorine 18. You will release a gamma radiation thanks to a positron and electron that meet together and annihilate. Okay, and this gamma. No problem. It will travel as far as it wants to travel. It will pass through all the things as long as it will come out of your body. That's where we capture the picture. So in the next section of uh, the video, we will look at how do you bring together these two physics concepts, geniuses, biomedical engineers and physicists and biologists working together. They brought these concepts and they created the machine, the PET scan. And you're going to learn the details of how that works in detail. Okay. So that's all for this video. Bye-bye. See you in the next one.